Meccano. This is the shutter disc, and uh, I put this paper band around to measure the circumference. I divided that by 13, and then I've marked up the paper band in 13 sections. So now I have to draw all these 13 lines to the centre. So this is the shutter disc I've made. Uh, 13 equidistant graduated slots and the mechanism has developed somewhat. I've changed the small gears for the correct pair. The gears I was using for the test uh, were not at the right angle and I eventually managed to get two pre-war Bacano bevel gears that um, are directly related to this larger bevel gear. Um, what happens is, well, let's have a look. <clears throat> As I crank the handle, the disc turns one way, the shutter disc. And as you can see, this, which will be what the uh, picture disc is fixed to, turns the other way. So it's a coaxial drive. You can see that the outer sleeve is split. And this part of the outer sleeve is attached right at the end here to the inner rod. So that wheel holds tight the outer sleeve and this wheel holds tight the inner rod and they're both connected together. It's a rather clunky way but it's with parts that I had to connect the outer section with the inner section. Now, so there's an inner rod that's turning around fixed to this outer sleeve. Now this part of the outer sleeve is not fixed to the rod, it's fixed to the shutter and the inner rod comes through and is fixed to the device that holds the picture disc. So I've geared it so that one turn of the handle just turns this large gear slightly, just a small amount of proportion, um, to compensate for the fact that we don't have three gears of the same size inside. The original to practice has three gears of the same size. And I've arranged it so that about two turns of the handle will turn one turn of the discs and that's 13 phases and because we want about 13 phases a second and two turns of the handle will give us, will, is quite happily manageable, slightly less than two turns required actually to give a turn <coughs> of the discs. And it's all, after a bit of greasing and boiling to stop the squeaking, it's all operating really smoothly, as you can see. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not binding anywhere yet. It might do a little bit when we get the picture disc on, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, the next thing is to finish making the, um, the new centre attachment on the picture disc, the sample picture disc. At the moment, this shutter is held to the shutter housing, as it were, shutter fixing. Um, it's held on with two small nuts to those bolts. But the arrangement finally is for there to be four magnets the other side of this disc that click onto four magnets on the fitting. And the magnets on the fitting are already in place, but I haven't yet put the magnets on the disc properly in place. So I've put these two little nuts on there. But eventually, those bolts will simply be locator pins. So it will be very easy during a show to actually pull off this shutter, just held on by the magnets, and then plop on a different shutter so that we can actually replicate what Mybridge did using shutters with different numbers of slots depending on the nature of his subject. Also, this center is much smaller than the center on the Supraxiscope. So I'm hoping we can show very much more of the image 
on those Sertrope discs. Then we were able to, with the replica Zupraxis goat, which only showed about that much of the image, and I'm hoping we can show that much. So that's assuming that it works. <laughs> and the lens has got to go in here. And the glass, and it is glass, not plastic, despite the fact that it's from pound shop type magnifier. Um, didn't take much to get it out to plastic, basically you just shake it around a bit. And it falls out. But, for our experiments, it's doing the job. So this is the machine so far. And the problems that we've been having, um, light spill, obviously I've got to make a cover there. And some of those problems are to do with the gears, because as you can see, there's a lot of slack. So one disc is able to turn slightly against the other one and that's not good when I say against the other one I mean when it shouldn't be turning against the other one so there's slack that's allowing slippage and I was kind of aware that might happen but I thought well once it gets going it'll tend to stop happening it'll just happen at the beginning and at the end of, of the turning but because there's no real flywheel effect, of, because the shutter is so light and the disc is just a single perspex disc, so it's quite light too. So they're able to, so they're not that regular in speed if there's a problem. I've added a little flywheel over here to help a little bit to the drive shaft. So, um, the other thing is on the original, the shutter disc and the picture disc are about that much apart. And what's happening here is it's touching, they're touching each other now and then. Uh, and, and that's causing slippage and that's causing the picture to jump sideways on the screen. So no mysteries, we've got to sort that out. Also with this particular light unit, it's 100 watt. And we know that with the 100 watt units we're getting mains ripple and that's evident. But I've got a 50 watt unit which generally I think doesn't suffer from mains ripple um, in production. So we should be able to clean. So we should be able to clear up that problem easily enough. Um, and there's other stuff but uh, let's get on. Do some more fettling. Well, it's now about finished. It's mounted on an upturned wooden tray from in IKEA and uh, there are bolts that hold it in position with wing nuts so that the mechanism can be detached from the base for transport. And the lighting unit just sits on four bolts. And an arrangement can be made, if necessary, um, to have the bolts in a different position. So that this lighting unit can go all the way back to here. At the moment, the light covers the normal area for a Zupraxiscope disc. But with the unit, the light unit moved backwards, it will cover a wider area 
for those zoetrope base discs in particular, the paper zoetrope discs from which I've had some transparency zoopraxiscope type discs made. So, there we are. That's it. And um, that will go away now until I need to play with a zoopraxiscope once more.